Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna take a look at two different products by Ingenious. The first one will be the SkyKey, which is an on-premise network controller with cloud management. And the second one will be the EAP 1250 access point. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have Amazon stores and I'll put those in the description below. So the first thing we'll do as always, we're gonna unbox these two and then we'll go over the specs of both of them and then get into some of the configuration. The first one we're gonna unbox is the Ingenious SkyKey. So this is a pretty small cloud management controller. All right, so I've ripped the top apart. Let's get it opened. And here we could see the Ingenious Sky Key in some plastic wrapping. I'll go ahead and rip that off. And it really doesn't come with that much. We have our Ingenious Sky Key, two LAN ports. The first one is LAN 1 with PoE, and that's how we'll be powering this up. And the second one is LAN 2. On the back, we have micro SD card where we would be able to save our configuration to. We have a reset button and then a power in it looks like, but it doesn't come with a power cable. On the back, we could mount this to a wall and it does come with screws and anchors if we want to mount it. It also comes with the quick start guide for using the Ingenious Sky Key. Here's the Ingenious EAP1250. Apparently it's an experienced turbo charge speed. So let's get this open. The box is a little bumped up from the shipping. Okay, and this is the EAP 1250. It comes in some pl uh, plastic wrapping. Let's go ahead and take that out of there. It's a fairly small access point. Um, it's a little thicker than most access points that we usually install. On the bottom, we have a power in and we have an ethernet port and we also have a reset button. This access point feels fairly lightweight and we'll be able to mount that pretty much anywhere. It comes with a quick installation guide. It comes with a power cable to power this access point up. Hopefully we could power it with PoE. And then it comes with some mounting screws and anchors. Now that we've seen the box, let's take a look at some of the features within the SkyKey and the EAP1250. So the SkyKey has flexible controller deployment, land deployments across different subnets or managed devices. It has a secure tunnel connection, so control packets are all encrypted between your end sky and the managed devices. So they have enterprise level mesh, which adds devices quickly, optimizes routes, and immediately self heals. And right here, this is just gonna show us the difference between the SkyKey and the Easy Master. So the SkyKey could have 100 managed devices. The UI access could be either through the cloud or on-premise. There's no subscription fee or licensing. It provides you with historical network report. It's gonna be a plug and play installation. All we need to do is plug in the SkyKey to a PoE port. It has app support, hierarchy network, no virtual machine needed. So down here, they just show a couple different topologies of how the SkyKey could work. We could have it on a local network up to 100 devices, or we could have multiple sky keys on each network. It has rich reporting and analytics, so it has a dashboard to show us all of our access points switches, our projects we're working on, claim devices, system resource usage, and system overview. And we'll go into this more once we log in to our SkyKey. If you guys want to use this product, you could try it 30 day risk-free and order a demo from Ingenious and I'll put the link in the description. Now let's take a look at our EAP 1250. The EAP 1250 goes for $95 MSRP US. The standards are Wave 2, 11 AC, a, B, G, and N. We have concurrent dual band, so the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, and a max data rate of 1300 megabits per second. So that will be between the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. It supports multi-user MIMO. It has beam forming antenna technology, and this access point will be managed by our SkyKey. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get my SkyKey plugged in, get the access point plugged in as well, and then we'll get these adopted into the SkyKey, and then we'll take a look at what we could do within the SkyKey. Okay, so I found my SkyKey in my network. I created a new network in the 192.168.99 range, so it is 192.168.99.178, and we'll press enter. Okay, so now this is the easy master login. We need to enter the username and password. The default username and password is admin, and the password is password. 
And now there's an important message up on the screen. Disable Ingenious Cloud Remote Access if you do not want Easy Master to connect to Ingenious Cloud Portal. You can always change this option later under the global settings in Remote Access. So we're going to disable the remote access for now. So we'll only be able to access this Sky Key internally on our network. We strongly recommend you to change the default uh, login password. This change will be applied to host OS of this device when logging Easy Master and host OS next time you need to use the new password. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a new password. So I'll boot this out back to the login page. So we'll put in the admin and then our new password. Now it says register your email for proceeding management before using the Easy Master and I'll press OK. And here we're just going to be setting up our admin account settings. I'm going to do this after, but the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go up to this arrow and download the new update for the Sky Key. Okay, so there's a new version, which is version 1.0.63. It was released in 2020 in October 19th, and it will show us some of the fix updates. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click on the update, and then we're going to click update. Now the firmware update has applied to our SkyKey. This is the SkyKey dashboard. Right now we have no access points associated to it. We have no switches as well as I don't have any ingenious switches. We can see the system resource usage. Right now we're at 1.5% of our CPU, 13.3% of our memory, and 13.4% of our internal disk space. Under system overview, we could see our MAC address, we could see our IP address, we could see the Easy Master version, the controller version, the Easy Register client version, and the uptime of the Sky Key. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to create a new project. So I'm going to just call this Mac Telecom and then press apply. Now a message is displayed, create project successfully, now direct to device config and I'll press OK. And this is showing us our one access point that we have plugged in on the same network. So we could see the EAP 1250. I'm going to go ahead and click the radio box and we're going to hit add. The device has been added successfully and we could see under the status that it is connecting. Our access point is now in our sky key and it took about five minutes before it went online in the sky key, which is fairly long um, considering other access points usually take a minute or two. So here we could see the status of the access point, which is online. We could see the model, which is the EAP 1250, see the MAC address of the access point, the device name, WAN and LAN IP, the firmware version, and the uptime. It's also showing us the operating channel for the two gigahertz and the five gigahertz band. So let's go ahead and set up a wireless network within the EAP 1250. So how you go do that, you click on the device name, here we could give it another name if we don't want to have it EAP 1250. I'm just going to leave it as is. We could switch the administrator username and password for the access point. We could configure the access point to either be DHCP or have a static IP address. Under the wireless radio settings, we could select which country we live in, and I'm in Canada. Then we could change our channel width, which channel that the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz is on the transmit power and the client limits. And we could also choose the data rate, which is set to auto. We could do bit rate control. And then under the WLAN settings, this is where we're gonna set up our wireless networks. So we could set up eight wireless networks onto this access point. Right now, we're just gonna set up one. So we'll click the ingenious 7D FD58 underscore one. And then we're gonna give it a name. So I'll just call it ingenious test. And we're gonna enable the 2.4 and the five gigahertz band. We're gonna disable hidden SSID, layer two isolation and VLAN isolation for now. You could have band steering to force it to the five gigahertz band or to prefer the five gigahertz band or to do band balance. If we wanted to have a captive portal, we would enable the captive portal and then we would select the captive portal profile and I'll show you that afterwards. Same with the hotspot 2.0. We could do traffic shaping if we wanna limit the bandwidth and we could do that per SSID or per user. I'll have that disabled for now. They have radius accounting, NAS port ID, Mac filtering and fast roaming. Under security, we're gonna select which security mode we want to use. This access point doesn't allow WPA3, so we're gonna select WPA2 personal, and then we're gonna give it a WPA passphrase of test one, two, three, four, and then press save. Then we need to apply the settings. 
And we can see the applying changes change successful. If we press OK, this should say, start saying applying changes and we'll have to wait until it provisions before we could put any device onto that SSID. While the access point is provisioning, let's go take a look at some of the other features within the Sky Key. We could go to device management. This will give us a summary. We could device config, which is the screen you see right now. We have AP groups if we wanna put a number of access points into a group. We have mesh and then we have schedule. Under monitor, we could look at active clients, which there won't be any right now as the SSID is just coming up. And we have rogue AP detection. Visualization, we have topology view, map view, floor plan view, upload view, and mesh view. I won't be able to see any of this as I don't have an ingenious switch. There's statistics, so we have access point statistics, wireless client statistics, and real-time throughput. So hotspot services, this is where we're gonna create our captive portal, our guest account, or our hotspot 2.0. I'm gonna go over to captive portal and create a captive portal. So we need to give our captive portal a profile name. I'll just call it captive portal. We're gonna have it in a bridge network connection mode, and I'll just have it as a splash and go for now. So the preview of what will pop up is right here. I'm just gonna leave this all at default, but you could switch the wording in this if you want, and then I'll press save changes. Now I'm gonna create a second SSID so that we could use the captive portal on. So we'll go down to WLAN settings. I'm gonna select on the second ID. We're gonna let it go on the 2.4 in the five gigahertz band. I'll just call it captive portal. Right here, the captive portal is disabled. We're gonna enable it and then choose that new profile that we created. I'm gonna do traffic shaping on this wireless network, so we're gonna enable that. We're gonna do it per user, and we're gonna set it to 10 megabits per second upload and download. And we're gonna have the security as none, as this will be a captive portal open network for our guest, and we'll press save, and then apply. Now our captive portal is created. I can't show you guys on screen as it won't broadcast, but I'll point the my phone towards you once I connect to the network, and you should see the splash page come up. And right here, we could see the captive portal, the agreement that was in the wording of our captive portal. And you guys could switch this to whatever you want if you have a legal um, notification that you have to put there. But we could press click to proceed and then we'll get internet access. So the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do a speed test and then we're gonna do an iPerf test when we're connected to the ingenious test, which has no bandwidth limits on it. So I'll go ahead and press go on the speed test. As you can see, we are getting 80.4 megabits per second down and 186 megabits per second upload. So let's do a iPerf test. I have my computer running as an iPerf server. We'll test the download with five streams. And our average was 94 megabits per second. So let's go ahead and do the same test, but for upload. and our average for upload was 131 megabits per second. The Ingenious Sky Key was pretty easy to use. The interface is okay. It sometimes lags a little bit and takes a little longer to get the access points into the Sky Key than other vendors. I still need to try out some of their switching and other access point to give you guys my full review. If you have any questions about the Sky Key or the EAP 1250, please leave it in the comments below. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.